Hi, in this video we're going to look at uh, internal and external IP addresses and I'm going to try and explain the difference between an internal and an external IP address. And to do that we're going to use this um, simple uh, network diagram it shows a typical small business slash uh, home network layout. Uh, it's a logical network diagram, not, not a physical one. And it shows a, a collection of computers here on the home network. You can see I've assigned IP addresses to them and they're connected to the internet using what I've called here a NAT router. And you'll probably know this at a, as a broadband or DSL router. And it's usually provided by your internet service provider and it connects your home network or your small office network to the internet usually via um, telephone cables or coax cable or um, fiber optic okay and if we look at the IP addresses that we've got here they all start with 192.168 and here they are there okay this address range is a special address range and it's allocated by the internet authorities and designated as a private address range to be used only on private networks now it's one of three address blocks that are designated for private usage and the other ones are the 10 address range and the other is the 172.16 address range the most commonly used one is the 192.168 and that's the one I'm using on the, these diagrams here. Now, you can see this NAT router uh, has got two IP addresses because it's on two networks. It's on this network here, and it's got an address here of 192.168.1254, and it's used on the, sorry, got it's connected to the internet, an external network, and this is the IP address it's known on, on that external network. Now these internal IP addresses are assigned by this NAT router using a service called DHCP which is built into this, this NAT router and they're not what's known as dynamic addresses, in other words they, they, they can change. Another important aspect of these uh, internal IP addresses uh, is that they're actually non-routable. So this address range 192.168 is non-routable on the internet and what that means is if you send a packet out onto the internet with this address, containing this address, it will get discarded by the first router it comes across. So how does a computer on here communi communicate with a computer, a web server or whatever, out on the internet? Well, it can't use these internal IP addresses because they're, they'll get discarded. What it does use is the external IP address. Now the ability to do that is provided by this NAT router. So what this NAT router does, it allows any computer on this internal network to communicate with any computer on this external network using a single IP address, which is the external IP address. So if you were to connect a browser here to, the inter to, to a web server on the internet, if you were to look at the IP address that that was using, it would be using this one here. And if you were to do the same with any of these computers, no matter whether you got one or with 100, they would all be using the same external IP address. And you can do that quite easily if you go to Google and just type in what's my IP address. Google will tell you your IP address, and it is the IP address of your sorry it is your external IP address that it will be showing you now if you go to any of the computers and you type in the command IP config slash all at the command line it will tell you the IP address of that computer and all those computers will have a different internal IP address but externally they will all be using the same external IP address now the external IP address is actually assigned to you by your ISP now for most um, home users, small office users, this IP address itself is a dynamic IP address. It's actually assigned by a DHCP server belonging to the ISP, so it will change. And I can show you that because I've set up a test script on one of my web servers that basically logs the IP address, this IP address here. And if I show you that log, you can see here there's the external IP address this was taken in um, December 2015. Now, if I look a few days later, it's changed to get changed there. And if I look later, it's changed again there. And if I look a bit later, 
it's changed again and again. So external IP addresses assigned by ISPs can also be dynamic. Now if you want a static IP address then usually you have to pay a premium. So that's it. Um, internal IP addresses and external IP addresses. If you've got any comments then uh, either use the comment form on YouTube or on the blog. Uh, if you like the video then please like it on, on YouTube. Until next time, bye.